We've got Mercedes-Benz new electric vehicle, the EQS. The S-Class of electric cars. Shh. Quiet and speedy. <laughs> and ultra luxurious. Andrea, what's under the floor of the EQS? This EV is powered by two electric motors producing 516 horsepower and 631 pound-feet of torque. It has a 107.8 kilowatt hour battery, 547 kilometers and 340 miles of EV range, standard all-wheel drive. It goes zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.3 seconds and zero to 60 miles per hour in 4.1 seconds. This thing is quick. In the US, there's a rear wheel drive option. It's called the 450 plus with a single electric motor, 329 horsepower and 350 miles of EV range. Andrea, what are the key standard features of the EQS? The base trim in Canada comes with an MBUX hyperscreen, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, over-the-air software updates, a wireless charger, heated power front seats with memory, a heated steering wheel, leather upholstery, a panoramic sunroof, a foot-activated tailgate, Burmester 3D surround sound system, which sounds incredible, and 20-inch wheels. Now, the most impressive thing about this car is the huge screen that goes from side to side, but there are still buttons here, and what do we have to put it in? You gotta put it in S for subscribe, and if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop, and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review, twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So please hit that subscribe and hit the bell, but also follow along on Instagram. Motormouth underscore Andrea to find out what's going on behind the scenes. And for me, it's Motormouth underscore Auto, and the links are below. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code Motormouth to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. Uh, driver, how's it going over there? Well, it's going pretty good. I'm driving, so <laughs> that's always fun. Boy, does this ever feel quick smooth, that quick snap, acceleration, everything you would expect from an EV. So we're doing about 80 kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour right yeah. now, and it's super, super quiet. What I love about this car is the rear steering. Yeah. It's very aggressive. A lot of times you get uh, active rear steering and it's there, but this one is really quite active and you can turn this thing on a dime, a penny, a quarter, whatever yeah. you like. It's something else. This is ultra aerodynamic. It has a drag coefficient of 0 0.20, which is the best. EV on the market right now for that. However, the Taycan, the Model S, and the Lucid Air are all pretty close. I can see everybody typing away, oh, a Tesla Model S is better. This is not a Model S. Nope. They're not trying to do a Model S. They're doing an EQS, Mercedes take on a large luxury sedan. They got the luxury part down. They know how to do that. They have manufacturing processes down, and they're not trying to be as fast as Tesla. Nope. They're doing their own thing, and I appreciate that. Yeah, it doesn't offer the same amount of horsepower or EV range as something like a Model S, especially the Plaid, of course, over a thousand horsepower, or even the Lucid Air. And you're right, Zach, they are doing their own form of electrification. And you know what? They did a really good job. Because Mercedes-Benz has a built-in buyer base. They have lots of customers that have had E-Class, S-Class. They've had lots of different kinds of vehicles. Now they can get a full large electric vehicle. There's a few things I really like about this. There is the paddle shifters, which control the regenerative braking. There's three levels. The highest regen braking really slows the vehicle down, but it never brings it to a complete stop. So I use this a lot just because of the easy access with the paddle shifters as I'm approaching a speed bump, a stop sign. I think it's an excellent system. Speaking of the brakes, yeah not the most precise, kind of mushy at times. That's one area they could improve, but um, with any car you get used to the braking. We drive 100 different cars a year and we get in and out of them. Yeah. We get used to all the different brakes and you would with this. I gotta say I'm not crazy about the brakes. You really need to give yourself some time to stop 
because they are so soft. Steering is quite light. If you put it in another drive mode, it firms it up a well, bit. Well, you're in sport now. Actually, yeah. you're in subscribe, but what, <laughs> we can put it in sport. It's definitely slightly heavier than what you would have, you but, know, in a comfort mode. But that's artificial, right? It's yep. all artificially mm -hmm. done. This is Mercedes' take on a full-size luxury sedan. Yep. It's always going to have traditional luxury. They won't stray from that. No. Now, what about the looks of this thing? It is controversial. Some like it, some don't. I think that because of the aerodynamics, Mercedes-Benz has got to make this vehicle look a little bit rounded. It's coming up in questions, coffee and cars. We're going to touch on yeah. this a little bit more. But um, I've grown to like it through the week. At first, I was like, I don't know, certain angles are good. The wheels look to me like a nightmare to clean. But <laughs> um, they certainly are impressive looking. Yeah. It's turning loads of heads everywhere we go. People are like, right away, they say, is that electric? Yeah. Which does the job, right? Getting people excited. Mercedes-Benz did flesh door handles, which we see a lot oh. in EVs. But what I like about them is when they open, you pull on them. They are really solid. You know. In in the Tesla Model Y, for example, when you open up part of the door handle, pulls out. Same with the Ionic 5. I like this a lot better. This also comes with standard 20 inch wheels, 21 inch in the US. We're riding on 21 inch wheels on our test model, but you can also get 22 inch wheels and lots of wheel designs. So another topic that's coming up in Questions Coffee and Cars is this impressive screen, but it's not really one screen. It's really three screens, right? Yeah, it's broken down into three screens. The center screen is a 17 0.7 inch touchscreen. The screen to the right is a 12.3 inch touchscreen. It does almost everything that the middle screen does. And then of course you've got a 12.3 inch digital driver display. This is very beautiful. The other screen is 17 inches. Is it really that hard for me to go from there to there? But I just it, I just think that's, but you can be doing two things at once. For example, right. um, say you're looking for a restaurant. Uh, the passenger can be looking that and somebody can be using this for something else. So it does That's help, right. especially when you're doing a long road trip. We saw this with Jeep in the new Grand Cherokee L, as well as the Wagoneer. And the Taycan has it as well. Yeah. Uh, so a very open cabin. This is a sportback design. It has a huge cargo area. We had an Audi A7, very similar. The back seats fold down, so it's got the best of a utility yeah. and a luxury sedan. I kind of like that. But uh, the seat comfort, we're not finding it there, are we? The front seat are okay. They're not as comfortable as the S-Class, but I wouldn't say uncomfortable. It's the rear seats are very firm. And even the seating position, our test model, the seats don't recline in the back. And I think that they, they really need it. So back to our Audi A7, another luxury brand. When you sat in the back seat of that car, the seat pitch was reclined. Yeah. So it was quite comfortable. You didn't need any kind of electric seat. With this, it's a little bit more upright. And the seat bottom, even though there's a huge amount of leg room in yeah. here, the seat bottom is rather short. And the padding in the or the cushion is, there's not much. I yeah. mean, I'm really surprised for an S-Class alternative that it doesn't have the comfort. Unlike most EVs, the sunroof here opens. Nice. Yeah. In the US, you have three trims to choose from. We only have one in Canada, and then we add packages and a la carte items to that. You can do the same in the US to make it your own and really spend as much money as you want. <laughs> Here's an interesting thing. In the US, there's a winter package to get heated rear seats and a heated steering wheel. Now, if you opt out of that, it doesn't matter what trim you pick, even the top trim, you have to pay $250 for the heated steering wheel. Is that not mind blowing? So basically in an S-Class alternative, you gotta pay yeah. 200 bucks. We had to show this EQS at night. Wow, look at the 64 color ambient lighting, check it out. You can also get a filtration system in here with a HEPA filter. What it tells you is what the air quality is on the outside and the inside. And guess what? This brand makes it purer for you on the inside. That's really, I think, for the Chinese market where they have poor air quality in major mm. cities. By the way, there's no frunk doesn't open. No. That's where the air filter is. Must be big. And guess where you have to put your windshield <laughs> washer fluid. There is a little panel on the left hand side of the driver and you open it up and that's where you put your washer fluid in. Over German engineers. Yeah. 
Now, how about carry on in a cooler? Massive lift back, very deep, yep. no problem, right? No problem. It handled it with ease. I love how deep it is. You can stack things back there. Plenty of room there's, in this EQS. And there's even a little compartment under the floor, not that big, but no. you can hide like a cable or something like that. And of course, the back seats go down. All right, we have teased it already, the design, the inside, all that. Let's get into it. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. With the focus on those hyper screens and technology, do you think it still has the air of an S-Class? As a consumer, does the interior radiate an air or luxury and sophistication to it? I think this is nicer than the S-Class. If you go back and watch our S-Class video, yeah. and we're going to leave a card up here, I think the interior is a step back for that car with one single screen. We even found some sharp edges mm -hmm. on the side. It wasn't finished to the level I would expect from no. this brand. And you know what? When you have uh, a successful person and they're taking a client out for lunch, they're going to get in this car and they're going to go, what the heck is this, a spaceship? That's what our youngest son said when I drove him to school. He couldn't believe this interior. I also don't like all the high gloss black trim that's in the S-Class. Mm -hmm. This center console But this is has, high gloss. Yes, it is. This center console has a beautiful leather interior. It's a floating center console with lots of storage underneath. I think that this is really well done. And this 56 inch hyper screen is really a showstopper in here. What is your opinion on the styling? I was not completely sold on it when I first saw it, but it's grown on me a lot. I felt the same way as you. I don't really like it. The profile is not my favorite. It looks like a big black jelly bean. But when I look but at it- they're from my the... favorite, the, jack, <laughs> the black ones. But when I look at it from the front straight on or from the back straight on, I like it a lot. Now, our vehicle, the black panel, doesn't have the little three-pointed stars in it, but you can get that in a package, which looks pretty cool. You know what? Having this for a week now, it's grown on me. Yeah. I think it's a combination of an S-Class and a sport back like a Panamera from Porsche. <laughs> The first time I saw it with the low nose and the high roof, it reminded me of the Chrysler 300 cars from the early 90s, the LH cars, yeah. um, especially the Concorde. Um, it kind of reminds me of that. But the more I'm around it, the more I like it. And I really do like the uh, Sportback. It's very functional. Yeah, it looks really good too. You are losing some headroom in the rear, but I think that it looks really sharp. Reminds me a lot of our A7 that we used to have. We put out a lot of content each week on the Motormouth YouTube channel, and it's super easy to find. All you do is you go to the YouTube search bar. First of all, you type in the name of the channel, Motormouth, and then the brand you're looking for. In this case, it's Mercedes or Mercedes Benz, and then all the videos we've done, even comparisons, you name it, will all show up. It's that easy. On paper, it's a fabulous luxury EV. The interior looks fabulous. The technology is state of the art. The question to ask is, will a traditional buyer who can afford the EQS accept the looks of this cutting edge model? I think the looks are okay. I mean, we talked about it already. It, it certainly grows on you and it's yeah. turned loads of heads everywhere we've gone with it. But when you get in, the traditional Mercedes-Benz owner will be very comfortable very quickly yeah. because even though this is all one big panel yeah. or it's several screens behind a panel, the way it works is exactly the same as all Mercedes-Benz. Instead of the trackpad, it's touchscreen, but everything is where it should be. Yeah, even the heated and ventilated seats are on the door for you. You've got a volume switch at the center console or on the steering wheel. You can do all this in the screen, but if you don't feel comfortable with it, you can do it outside of the screen. So it's a nice combination of very futuristic and traditional. They went right down the middle and did a good job. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? Is this simply Mercedes throwing money at the EV market to compete with Tesla? Or does this actually represent a shift in philosophy for Mercedes? Let's not forget, this is the same company that produces the planet-killing G-Wagon. So this EQ is not a new thing. No. I was at, I believe it was the Paris Auto Show back when they used to have auto shows. Andrea, we'll go to the Paris Auto <laughs> Show one time in Gay Patty. Oh. 
Um, Love this was years ago when they unveiled the very first EQ car, which then turned out to be the EQC. And that is something they planned years ago to have all of these vehicles electrified. And now we're starting to see the fruits of their labors. Yes. Now the EQC is available in Europe. It's not available here. Automotive Press is actually reporting that Mercedes-Benz has decided not to bring it in until around 2025. This year, though, we are getting the EQE midside sedan as well as the EQB, the optional seven seater. I think that's going to be a huge hit. They're waiting for the new um, GLC to come. Yeah. And then they're going to bring out that Makes later sense. version because there is one coming next year. Yes. So that's why they're holding off for 2025. But you're going to see from all of these brands, including, you know, mainline brands, they're bringing out loads of electrified vehicles and they have a big plan. It isn't just Johnny Come Lady. Oh, one no. other thing about the G Wagon, yeah. which we thought was fantastic, it's sold out for the next two years. So people are voting with their wallet and they want those thirsty V8 engines. Yeah. Uh, by 2025, you'll be able to choose an electric alternative of every model within this fleet. It's going to be pretty impressive. Three years away, that's not very far. No. So if you're rich, like rich, and you want a fancy electric car, there are choices now. Let's get into it. For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Porsche Taycan 4S with 522 horsepower and 320 kilometers, 199 miles of EV range. It starts at just under $122,000. Based on the same platform as the Taycan is the Audi e-tron S Sportback with 469 horsepower. It has 341 kilometers or 212 miles of EV range. It is a starting price of just over $109,000. The Tesla Model S with 670 horsepower and 652 kilometers, 405 miles of EV range. It has a starting price of just under $128,000. New to the market is the Lucid Air Touring with 620 horsepower, 653 kilometers or 406 miles of EV range. It has a starting price of $129,000. So there are four luxury EVs for you to consider. So we have some information about charging times, what kind of free charging you get when you buy one of these and our vital stats. Let's start with pricing. The base model in Canada starts at just over $144,000 and in the US, just over $119,000. The top pinnacle trim in the US is just over $125,000. With a 240 volt outlet, the EQS can charge from 10 to 100% in 11 hours and 25 minutes. With a DC fast charger, it can go from 10 to 80% in just 31 minutes. All EQ platform vehicles can connect to a Mercedes Me Connect app, which is available on Google Play and app stores. This simplifies the process of finding and using and paying for charging stations. Each EQS purchased in Canada includes three years worth of Mercedes Me Charge. And in the US, EQS owners get free unlimited 30 minute charging sessions for two years at Electrify America stations. The warranty is four years or 80,000 kilometers, 50,000 miles. Lightning round. Two things we like, two things we like to see improved. I love how Mercedes Benz did their own thing with this EV. And if you like traditional luxury, this takes it to the next level. What I'd like to see an improvement is fix those soft brakes. I'm just not a big fan of them. And the back seat isn't that comfortable. Roomy, but not that comfy. Smooth, quick, and quiet. This EQS doesn't disappoint. Just the tip of the iceberg. Lots to come from Mercedes-Benz. This video is brought to you by CarCost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.